Hey y'all, I'm supposed to be asleep, but as usual, my mind is working. Okay, so. I realized that there were some lessons that were learned in the previous manipulationship that I was in. I did not know that the person was a malignant narcissist, um, but I found out. In the thorough nice guy act was in full effect for at least a few months. At least. But then there's always, oh, excuse me, there's always cracks in the facade. Um, it's just a matter of time before you see, you know, you see that. And some of the lessons, important lessons that I've learned is when someone is very vague, your whole so-called connection, the person is very vague and they never give you direct answers. Never, ever give you direct answers. They cannot be trusted. Okay. They cannot be trusted. Period. Also, sometimes people reveal what they've done by deliberate actions in front of someone else. For example, that individual is perpetrating straight, perpetrating nature guy, perpetrating physically athletic and all this other bullshit. And he is none of those things. Um, he's hiding the fact that he's bisexual and everything else. Well, he had told me that one of the guys in the social group that we were a part of. Oh, Lord. Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. I'm tired. But not, not tired enough to sleep, which is really annoying. Anyway, um, so he told me that one of the guys in the group was bisexual. And I said, well, how do you know? I just get that vibe. I just get that vibe. I just... I just feel like he is. Okay, so hold on to that thought, right? So then there were times whenever we went out in public, I noticed that he always acted distant towards me. He wasn't affectionate or anything. He, he acted like I was a stranger. So this one particular time, all of us went... Um, as a group, we went out and we, you know, had a good time and everything. And when we were leaving, me and Skeletor, that's what I call him. Sometimes I call him hippie. Um, me and Skeletor were leaving and we walked past this guy. Skeletor reaches for my hand to hold my hand in front of this person. Now, that is 1,000% out of character for him. Okay. 1,000% out of character. He's not an affectionate person. So, to deliberately do that in front of that guy, that tells me he was romantically involved with him. And he was basically doing the, screw you, I'm with her now. Because, as I said, that was completely out of character deliberately grab my hand like strutting around like mm -hmm. he's been involved with that guy okay obviously um so the vagueness is something that's a red fl massive red flag another thing is the individual is deceptively calm I need to quit yawning. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I can't help it. Um, do not trust somebody who is super laid back majority of the time. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some people who are super chill. That's just their personality. They're super chill. And then there's individuals that perpetrate that, you know, I'm laid back. 
I don't get excited about anything. I just roll with the dice. When you find out that that person is argumentative, they love to start fights. They love to argue. They love to be negative and get mad at you when you're negative. Um, they can do it. You can't because narcissists are a walking, talking, massive hypocrite. They could do th a whole lot of things that you're not allowed to do. Quotation marks allowed to do. So anyway, that super calm facade underneath all of that super calm is the desire to get somebody back when they even do the slightest thing whether it's a joke whether it's not a joke whether they took something super personal or whatever the trickery and the backstabbing and the sneakiness and the manipulation knows absolutely no barriers so you look at oh this person's so calm that's such a nice soft place to land hold your horses right there no 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 everybody who seems super 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 calm may not always be super super calm they may be the biggest backstabber you ever saw in your life okay so that's why you have to take your time to get to know somebody because I mean like wow um, you you're gonna see that who you met and who you find out is really behind the curtain are two completely different things okay what other I also noticed the amount of effort put in to create this massive lie to other people, there's this individual and narcissists in general will exert endless attention, endless time, endless unrelenting energy to keep this fake facade going so that people don't find out who they are. Okay. He is lying in front of his church, open heart Baptist church. He's lying, faking, pretending. He acts like he's straight as an arrow and his church don't play that. They don't believe in, you know, Adam and Steve. They believe in Adam and Eve. Okay. They're very, um, I don't know what the word would be, but they're very strict with that, so to speak. And um, they, you know, the pastor says not really the nicest things about people who aren't doing the traditional relationship. And he just sits there and pretends that he don't notice that pastor got something negative to say about it. He just acts like that don't apply to him because he's trying to perpetrate straight anyway. So. You can say whatever you want to say about alternate lifestyles because he act like that don't apply to his ass. So there's so much energy, endless energy that narcissists in general do in front of everybody, their church, their job, their acquaintances, so-called friends. I call them so-called friends because nine times out of 10, the friends don't really know who that person is. They don't know that they're unbalanced they don't know that they can't control their emotions they don't know that they're um backstabbing and throat cutting they don't know that about them so they're perpetrating i'm the nicest person in the world and i would jump into a burning building to save a child and i don't want to be on camera by the media because i'm going to hide into the darkness and, and go home because i don't want to be acknowledged for what i've done oh please um Another thing, the gaslighting, which narcissists do this, right? The gaslighting is so in your face. The lying and gaslighting is so in your face. A prime example, um, I had gone on a really long hike with Skeletor in the group. Well, I fell off of one of the ridges and think 
thankfully it wasn't one that's super high because I probably would have died and I'm not exaggerating some of those are so high that the ground below looks small okay so we're talking extremely uneven terrain so I fell off one of the smaller ridges or else I would not be talking to you all right now might be paralyzed or dead probably did okay so um and I'm not exaggerating um, so I fell off a smaller ridge and I kind of landed on the lake that has been through everything. It's been broken all kind of ways and had metal put in it, had metal removed from it and everything. And so it wasn't really happy about me taking a fall like that. That was a group that Skeletor used to be the organizer for. So you would think, and this is me being dumb, apparently, you would think that the person would take responsibility for anybody who's in the group. You know, somebody who's having a medical issue, somebody who falls, you know, you would think that they would kind of be the one of the first people to that person's side. Like, you're in my group, so I'm kind of responsible for you. I want to make sure you're okay. Nope. Nope. I think there were two other people that hurried to my side and they were standing there and Skeletor was standing off in the background just looking because when something is wrong with you he has absolutely nothing to do with that nothing to do with that absolutely zippo to do with that and then I think somewhere in the dark recesses of what is supposed to be his mind he realized that oh I guess I can't be this obvious about being an asshole because there's a group here so I better mosey over there when I talked to him about that after the fact, he would look me dead in my eyes without blinking and say, I was there. I, I was the, one of the first people there. And no, you weren't. Yes, I was. When a person feels that comfortable with lying and gaslighting, my God, they are just so demonic. That is so twisted and sick. How can you look dead in the person's eyes without blinking and lie your ass off. Why? Because they've been doing it their whole life and they're super comfortable with it. Their tongue is extra slippery because the lies just slide right off. Like I told you before with a zero effort. So there's a lot of lessons to be learned. Um, pay attention to people's body language, pay attention to their eye contact or lack thereof. Pay attention to the vibe. That is the most important thing. How you feel when you're with this person. If you don't feel 100% comfortable around them, that's a massive red flag. And I never felt 100% comfortable around him. Something about him was just always off. And I really couldn't put my finger on it. Well, I figured it out. Um, I also know that, and you guys can probably relate to this, there's plenty of narcissists out there who are extremely paranoid to the point of schizophrenic tendencies he has iron decorative iron um i don't know what you call it but they're like decorative a decorative design it's double glass in the front door of his home and that his parents paid for but anyway move right along um and the iron the decorative iron thing because you know he's trying to make his door I guess bulletproof or something the downstairs in the basement is a safe a fairly large safe that is literally bolted to the ground I mean he acts like he got a museum with artifacts in there that are worth millions of dollars or something the schizophrenia tenant the schizophrenic tendencies are really frightening to be quite honest nobody needs to be that paranoid nobody panics when you're in their house when someone else isn't there lee hammock talked about he's not schizophrenic but he took some tests he's a self-aware narcissist he's been in psychotherapy for six years but he took some additional tests that said that he rated high in the schizophrenia realm with the the symptomology of schizophrenia and this individual is the exact same way super high on the schizophrenic um tendencies everybody's after him someone's gonna blow up my house one day so i have to have double glass and 
iron and uh, shotgun underneath my bed in the bedroom and I have to have this this safe that has all these millions of dollars museum quality artifacts which there's nothing in the safe bolted to the ground in case somebody should bust up in my home and attack me and steal things I mean the paranoia is really frightening um, really it's just so scary it's twisted that a person is that much of a loose cannon in, in their head so you got to pay attention to all of this you know and, and that shows a total opposite of what he's trying to portray like he's trying to portray he's super chill super chill super chill but then you look at all these extra things that he did a, as a safety precaution which is totally weird so that defies logic so far as on one hand you acting like you unfazed and you just super chill on the other hand you acting like you know somebody's gonna come up in here and try to hurt me does he deserve it yes if he ever got hurt or worse that would not bother me he's a horrible person but to live in such a way that you're acting schizophrenic high 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 tendencies of schizophrenia that's kind of bizarre but some narcs are like that the whole world's coming after them so i gotta i gotta prepare gotta make all my windows bulletproof and and you know shotgun proof and everything it's just weird as hell it's very weird but it just shows you the dark recesses of this individual's mind okay so yeah there's a lot of lessons to be learned so look back on the narcissistic relationships so-called relationships that you guys have had manipulationships and you will see that there's a whole lot of lessons that you learned from dealing with this person and even if you knew those things it got refreshed being with someone who's so demonic so yeah lessons lessons life is a huge classroom you're either going to fail or you're going to learn and when you learn you will pass when these situations arise in the future. You guys take care. Much love. Bye-bye.